Hello and welcome to this new edition of the Top MBA Bookshelf. Today I'm happy to present the book by Manfred Ketz de Vries, a professor from INSEAD who brings psychology of the depth to the study of uh, the field of leadership uh, with his book Leaders, Fools and Imposters. De Vries starts by introducing the concept of transference, which Freud described as the acting out of emotional reactions from the past, and mostly between uh, kids and parents, which in a professional context uh, translates to followers and leaders respectively. So one type of transference is the idealization of the leaders by the followers. And therein lies a trap for the leader uh, where if the leader uh, feels compelled to uh, live up to the expectations to, of the followers uh, to the point where the reality that they create together gets distorted, uh, then the leader, uh, then the followers may think that the leader is doing great only because he or she does what they expect, what they project as uh, being needed, which is very dangerous both for the leaders and for the organization as a whole. Another issue uh, that may sound more familiar uh, is that of narcissism. Uh, where does narcissism come from? Typically, kids experience themselves as both grandiose and helpless. And if, when they grow up, there is too much frustration uh, that can result in an insatiable hunger for power and prestige. And that hunger can even translate into abuse of power. Um, where the symptoms of that abuse of power are the suppression of individualisms, of any sense of dissent. Uh, de Vries goes on to analyze many cases that go from the uh, concentration camps uh, where um, the, uh, the, the prisoners who express any sort of dissent, any sort of individualisms, were really putting their lives at risk uh, and they were typically stripped of any identity, including their names, and they were just uh, numbers. Uh, but also to the behavior of dictators like Saddam Hussein, or even in an organizational and, and business context. He takes the example of Robert Maxwell, who had a very tyrannical behavior both towards his business associates and his own family. Uh, and, and so the problem for organizations is to detect those potential abuse of power before it's too late. And, and one issue with that is that very often those abuse of power uh, appear in a person's behavior only once they've reached the top, only once uh, they are at the top, and therefore the organization may realize those abuse of power only too late. Another uh, more subtle type of abuse of power in modern organizations is the emotional manipulation of employees. Uh, and most of you probably know how Disney employees uh, are expected to smile at all times, irrespective of their actual uh, feelings. And uh, De Vries contends that this is actually very dangerous for organizations because it leads organizations to be either very compulsive and very bureaucratic, bent on you know, following processes, or very depressive and very conservative in how uh, they operate. So what are the remedies that uh, he suggests, he points to? Uh, one is the fool, uh, which in the times of uh, the kings and queens uh, were not like the stupid person, but the truth sayer, uh, the one using humor to convey inconvenient truth and give a real check to the king. Who would play that role in the modern organization? Uh, Jeffrey says it could be the whistleblower, but the problem with whistleblowers is that they're very exposed uh, to retribution. Uh, better and more effective are typically insiders, executives who have a trusted bond with the leader and can use humor to uh, convey those inconvenient truths. You also have external consultants. If they have developed such a bond, who can be effective um, fools for the leaders of the organizations. But of course, the ideal is to have what he calls balanced leadership, where leaders are familiar with those processes uh, of uh, psychological development uh, and risks with transference, projection, idealization, uh, narcissism, and, uh, and as a result, maintain a capacity for reality testing or cultivate that capacity for reality testing. Also, have the ability to uh, defy the, uh, conf the norms and, and not conform to what the organization expects, but in a sense, fight the organization and, and keep a fresh 
a freshness, a spontaneity in the expression of their emotions, a diversity of expression of emotions, which is something you could have seen in the Steve Job or uh, Jack Welch, etc. And finally, also uh, invite uh, robust discussions, uh, invite dissent and disagreement. One last thing is that having that capacity for reality uh, testing does not mean that you should not uh, uh, play or engage in flights of fantasy, as De Vries says, uh, because these are really important for creativity and even to formulate the bold goals that uh, can help focus and, and motivate an organization. And with that, I wish you a good day and uh, looking forward to our next edition of the Top MBA Bookshelf.